Welcome everyone to this July 4th edition of What's Happening in Crypto with the Crypto Lark broadcasting to you from New Zealand and bringing you all of the latest from the crypto world and beyond. Happy 4th of July as well to everyone in the States and happy Wednesday to everyone else. Bitcoin, $6,496. We have lost 2.2% in the last 24 hours. Perhaps the market is getting a bit weirded out by what's been happening with Syscoin and Binance today. Apparently the Syscoin blockchain has had some serious drama happening with apparently someone mining a billion coins on the Syscoin blockchain, which is a very substantial amount considering that the total supply is only 888 million currently. Now we did see some very odd trading happening over on Binance with one Syscoin going for 96 Bitcoin. To put that in perspective, Syscoin before this happened was trading at around 30 to 40 cents. So that's a pretty substantial increase. In immediate news of this, Binance starts undergoing system maintenance. All trading and withdrawals and other account functions have been suspended temporarily. This is quite a hot story at the moment, so we don't have all the details about what exactly has happened. It seems that though APIs have been hacked again, this is not the first time that it's happened on Binance where the APIs have been corrupted. Very unfortunate situation for the Syscoin community. And of course, uh, definitely not the best situation for Binance, although they are reacting to it. And they're ensuring everyone that funds are safe, which is the most important thing. On to our next story. The Indian Supreme Court continues to uphold the central bank's ban on crypto dealings. Really unfortunate situation happening over in India with cryptocurrencies at the moment. I would have really loved to have seen the Indian Supreme Court siding with the really the business, I suppose, and letting people do what they want with their money. However, they have gone with the side of the conservatives. And really, you have to ask yourself the question, who's pushing this? I mean, obviously, the central bank is pushing this, but who's pulling the strings behind that? What business interests and banking interests stand to lose the most from this, from cryptocurrencies, that being, of course, the IRS, yes, everybody's least favorite tax agency, launches international initiative to hunt down cryptocurrency tax fraudsters. The initiative, J5, is a joint effort between five countries. So we have the USA, the Netherlands, the UK, Canada, and Australia all joining forces here. This may be the worst idea for a boy band I have ever heard However, of course, we do have to keep in mind that tax fraud does exist, and it depends on how you feel about taxes, I suppose, overall. But then you do have to remember, Wall Street still exists. Here they are cracking down on international cryptocurrency tax fraudsters, and then Wall Street. Over in Uganda, the Ugandan government has rolled out a five cent daily tax to access social media. Apparently, the government didn't like that certain people were talking and gossiping about certain people, probably the government, of course, on social media. To put it in perspective, I know five cents doesn't seem like a lot of money to a lot of you. In Uganda, the average yearly income is $615. So even though this is only around $20 a year 
for any Ugandan social media user, that's a lot of money if you're only making $615 a year. This sucks. This just goes to show why it is so important to have an open and free and fair internet that everyone can access equally. You should not have your government deciding that you're not allowed to look at certain social media sites or that you have to pay to look at social media sites. And to make this even a little more weird and Orwellian, they're going to be using that five cent daily tax to help crack down on people who are posting things which are probably not friendly to the government on social media. Couldn't be a much worse situation in my mind. Gold, yes, that thing that you find in your microchips and also people like to invest in. Well, gold has taken a page from Bitcoin Cash and has decided to fork itself. There is a new form of gold, which is more gold than gold, golder than gold, if you will. A fascinating story. This is actually quite interesting that scientists have found a way to make gold even cooler, I suppose. Over in Canada, the question arises, is marijuana the new Bitcoin? Well, depending on how much marijuana you are smoking, you may indeed think that marijuana and Bitcoin are the same thing. This article in particular is talking about how the stocks of two of Canada's largest marijuana companies are getting high as market prices light up. Canadians must be stoking the flame of liberty over this. And hopefully, they'll be planting the good seeds for the next generation. And maybe all of that smoke rolling across the southern border will have an effect on other North American legislators in terms of marijuana legalization for recreational purposes. Congratulations, Canada, for legalizing recreational marijuana. This is a positive step for freedom. Hopefully others will follow the example and get on board sooner than later. Over in Hong Kong, Hong Kong continues taking regulatory action, hoping to become an international blockchain hub. China itself is going the blockchain, not Bitcoin route. However, we have seen such a varied amount of legislation and so many conflicting statements from the Chinese government, Hong Kong really has an opportunity here. However, we have seen in the past where the Chinese government has been pulling the strings in Hong Kong when it comes to things that they don't like. So there is that opportunity for Chinese-based crypto businesses to move their offices into Hong Kong, assuming that Beijing does not try and have that long reach across the border. It would be a very good thing for Hong Kong, though, if they can establish themselves in that position. There is a lot of competition, though. Microsoft launching Enterprise Blockchain Partnership in Taiwan. Just goes to show that every day new partnerships are being made, and every day a new country is putting its hand up and saying, I want in on the blockchain train. And over in the UK, 40% of companies in the regulatory sandbox are deploying distributed ledger technology. That is a huge percentage of company. Now, just because they are using distributed ledger technology does not mean they're using cryptocurrencies necessarily. It is, of course, very possible to have your own private permissioned blockchain. However, I would imagine that many of these companies will be exploring cryptocurrency open, permissionless, trustless blockchain solutions for their businesses. And to end our news segment today on a warm and fuzzy plastic bank harnessing the blockchain to rid the oceans of plastic garbage. We covered a similar story recently about the Bounties Network incentivizing people to go out and clean up their beaches. This Canadian startup takes it one step farther, already operating in countries like Haiti and Brazil, looking to move into Indonesia very soon. These countries have some of the worst rates of plastic going into the ocean. So anything that can incentivize people to do something a little bit differently is a very positive thing. 
And while you may not think of going out and recycling plastic as a lucrative thing to do, if you live in a place where the average daily income is only a dollar, but you can make four or five dollars cleaning up the plastic off of your local beach and then depositing it with plastic bank, you may indeed be incentivized. Thanks so much for watching the video. Let me know what you think about any of today's news stories in the comment section down below. Thumbs up the video. Help our community grow by sharing these videos around the internet. Join the conversation over on Twitter. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.